When you think of Bigfoot, you're probably imagining a large hairy ape. But the Bigfoot of the Australian billabongs is no swamp ape. Instead, it's a small graceful bird bouncing along the lily pads with water skis for feet. Finding a great place to eat is important for survival. And the Jacana has chosen outback ponds as their preferred brunch spots. Adapting to your chosen habitat is essential to fine dining in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please, please search Cassie Mise- Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, too. Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, Richard Kaspar, Lottie and Aubrey, Gray Hughes, and Wednesday Rabbit. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about the Bigfoot of the Outback, but more on that later. The Outback. Yeah, like the skunk ape of the Outback. <laughs> Um, a, a lot less elusive mm-hmm. and a lot less hairy mm-hmm. we're talking about the Jacana Jacana mm-hmm. the comb crested especially the comb crested yeah yeah me want honeycomb mm-hmm. um, it's also called the lotus bird or the lily trotter, which th- I don't understand why it's not just called the lily trotter. Tr- lily trotter? That's like, that's the best name of the Pretty three. good, yeah. Jacana is, just doesn't doesn't tell me anything. Lotus Bird is pretty good, and lily trotter, trotter is a home run. Even though I've, unsu- I've been unsuccessful in trying to say it three times in a row. Um, but we're going to call it uh, Chicken Stilts. Um, and Jacana Walk on Water, unless you believe. <laughs> I just read that portion in Matthew, so it's, it's fresh in my mind. Um, but what is what is a jacana? I mean, it's obviously a bird. I said lotus bird. But let's taxonomize this so that you know exactly mm-hmm. what kind of bird it is. Uh, it's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in, and that kingdom is Animalia. The phylum is Chordata because it has a spine. The class is Aves. Because it's a bird. Um, and the order is Shiradriiformes. Two eyes in there. Driiformes. Shiradriiformes. Um, this is a pretty wide group of birds. They're kind of medium sized. Um, most of them are either waterfowl or live near water. So, like, seagulls fall into this group, but it's tough to really say, like, Oh, this is like ravens or something. It's a like actually the order of Passeriformes. That's another huge order where it's like, what? How do you even just quickly describe that to somebody? But uh, water adjacent birds is probably the best way to to classify uh, Chiradriformes. Um, the family is Jacanidae. The genus is Aredipara. Eredeparra. There's two R's in there. Maybe I gotta mm-hmm. roll that one. Um, and the species is Gallinacea. So Eredepara Gallinacea. Gallimimus. Gallim Gallim Gallimimus. Flocking this way. Mm. Um so since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show. Cook 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 cook. Critter groups, the part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal, or what is the term of entry, or what is the collective noun? A group of jacanas. We got one. If you saw a group of jacanas, would you say that's A, a waddle of jacanas, B, 
a slink of jacanas, C, a prance of jacanas, or D, a jaunt of jacanas? It had better be jaunt, final answer. <laughs> That's incorrect. The answer is waddle. It's a waddle of jacanas. A yeah, jaunt no, of jacanas. I should have known. Waddle sounds like an Australian word. So does Lily Trotter, though. I'll give him that. Like, that's that, that that's a very Australian thing, way to describe something. Oh, it's a Lily Trotter. Um, actually, like, li like a, a trotty would probably what, be what they called it. Um, but now I'm... Now that I say that, I'm kind of afraid that that's some sort of, like, slur, so... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Australian English well enough to just throw that out there, but they're always like swim, like swimmies, and all these all these fun ways of saying things with an e at the end. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's talk about what the jacana looks like. Um, it is a chicken heron on stilts. End of story. Um, no, it's a, It has a a black head. Um, and a black neck, and it has this it should flashy. Focus on its skincare, then. Yeah, it's got a lot of blackheads. Um, it needs uh, Neutrogena. Is that the? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the skincare thing. Um, it has, but it, it's characterized with this um, this f fleshy, bright red waddle that goes from the top of its head down a little bit. Um, this is why it's called the comb crested chicana. It has a white face and it goes down to its throat. Um, when during breeding season, that waddle is um, more on the pink side. And then when outside of breeding season it is more on the orange side. So it actually changes it's in blushing color. Blushing during mating season. Yeah, it's just always blushing. There is a, uh, it has a, a black band um, on, on its chest, and the rest of its belly is white. Um, it has black wings, black feathers on its wings, um, but also like it's a kind of a grayish brown on the back side. So it's, it's, it's got a lot of blacks, a lot of grays, and then it's got this, and a lot of whites, and then it's got this flashy red um, waddle on the top of its head. Um, one of its big characteristics is it's got some. Do you want me? Is it's got some some really long, goofy looking legs? Um, yeah, I'm pretty much talking. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay. Is it if you look at a picture of it as a chick, it looks like a duck that Sid from Toy Story got a hold of and just yes. like kind of taped some some like tree branches to. Uh it do, does not look like it fits. Um but uh so but it has uh how how, how big is it? I don't have a segue for this. Just tell us how big it is. Oh, well, welcome to the Blood Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show that's introduced by you. When you send in audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words Measure Up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have any Measure Up intro this week, but that means we get to hear from an animal, and Carlos has to guess what it is slash who it is. I hope it's a There's lily no trotter. There's no chicanas. There's no lily trotters in the... In the uh, in the um, uh, lexicon, uh, the the in, 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 on TV, um, there isn't an obscure we're... Australian cartoon that has a Lily Trotter as a main character with a uh, I tried to inexplicably find one, no. Brooklyn accent. But uh, we are going to hear from an Australian bird. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> goodness gracious. Calm down. I'm not going to hurt you. 
<laughs> Do you know? I this thought is? it was going to be this. Yes, it's the eagle from Rescuers Down Under. Yeah, the eagle that is the size of a like medieval fantasy griffin. <laughs> it's um, the... Oh man, I wish I had said it. I would have looked so prescient if I had said it. I was going to be like, "Oh, is it the eagle from Rescuers Down Under?" That's what I was literally about to say. Um, cause the only other thing I could think of was Jeffrey Rush's character in Finding Nemo, the Australian pelican that he plays. Yeah, that would have been a, an option. But, um, yeah, there's but no, it, I try to look up like emus it, and <laughs> other stuff, like a lot of like Australian stuff with emus in it. The emus don't talk. There's cartoons and stuff. But they don't talk or make sounds at all. They're just like looking at the camera and like winking and stuff like Roadrunner. True. I like how you uh, instead of the the character that talks and has lines and stuff, you went with the character that just Trains. destroys the eardrums. Yeah, because you have to hear from the animal. Yeah. And it's funny, like the the mice talk, but the eagle doesn't. It's one of those like Disney Pluto situations. Goofy's a dog. Yeah. Pluto's a dog. What's wh- where's the injustice here? It's too regal to talk. It but would just like, be silly. But what about the great Lord Gua here from from Lord of the Rings? He's not too regal to talk. But they he talks in eagle, right? Like he doesn't speak English, does he? Uh, I want to say he does speak English, but in the books they speak, that. yeah. But the books are silly. <laughs> um Anyway, I mean, the Hobbit is silly, uh, intentionally, but yeah, that's what, that's that. So let's talk about length. Females are larger at two, 24 to 27 centimeters or 9.4 to 10.6 inches. How many comb crested chicanas go into the height of Bigfoot? Based on the most common physical descriptions in the sightings. I was going to say, can't, can't, cannot answer Zero. Bigfoot's not real. <laughs> uh, here's a hint. Of course, Bigfoot is likely not a real animal, though there are tons of believers out there. Uh, honest sightings are likely misidentified upright animals or people in fur clothing or costumes. Uh by honest sightings, I mean people who aren't lying. People who believe that they saw something. Um, the lack of evidence is, in light of modern day technology, is a problem for Sasquatch hunters, with most evidence being disproven or found to be intentional hoaxes. If there was a population so small for them to evade detection, they would run into genetic issues for a species like Bigfoot to persist over time. They would need to be there would need to be multiple specimens for breeding. Maintaining genetic diversity and avoiding inbreeding would be challenging for a tiny population. No, they are A immortal and B asexual Magic. butters. <laughs> butters. Yeah, they just bud. Butters like from uh isn't that a character from uh Trailer Park Boys? No, that's Bubbles. No, I can't. Why can't I think of any? Oh, I need to go to sleep is why. <laughs> the character, the the show where like the Kenny always dies. South Park. South Park. I don't know. I've seen one episode of that show. I've seen um, one. All right. Sasquatch is like, let's say eight feet tall. So I'm going to say nine of these um, big-footed birds go into the proposed height of Bigfoot himself. The one and only. There's only one. Uh-huh. He and he is immortal. If he wants to make more, they'll just fall off of him like a coral polyp. Final answer? Yes. The correct answer is 10 point. One at nine. So that, what is that? 89 and change percent. That's a nursing school. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Sasquatch is said to be like nine feet tall. That's very tall. That's, you know, almost Goliath Goliath tall. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about 
their weight. Uh, females are 120 to 150 grams. Unfortunately, not pounds. It's not a, uh, an emu sized, uh, creature. It's, it's um, less than or, a foot tall, but it, it weighs yeah. 150 pounds. It's, it's think, got neutron star material. <laughs> it's made out of plutonium. Um, or 4.2 to 5.3 ounces, five ounces. That's neutron star level. Yeah, that's the heaviest uh, how, thing that there is. How many Jacana weights go into, or could a Victoria Boliviana water lily support before sinking? So we're looking for the the lily's buoyancy. Yeah, but like, here's a hint: the Victoria Boliviana, also known as the Bolivian water lily. Is the largest water lily in the world. The leaves of Victoria Boliviana can grow to an impressive width of around three meters or nine feet and ten inches. Oh, I've seen these. So, so you're looking for, and they even have a ridge so that, like, uh, yeah, you can't, you don't fall off it. So that you, you so that you can play uh, handball on it. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking for the amount of weight that this is said to be able to hold. Yeah, that's quite a bit. It's quite a probably quite a few birds. Um, fifty. Final answer. I'm not even going to do math. Fifty. Uh, birds. The correct answer is five hundred and thirty-one. <laughs> oh boy. The lily pad is said to support the weight of a human being. Up to 175 pounds. No, I, I'm not qualified. Maybe if I like laid laid out. A large out. woman or a like medium to small man. Maybe if you, yeah, if you laid down, it would work. But not standing up for me. Yeah. Although, can anyone just stand like straight on it? Or when they say it can hold the weight of a person, do they mean like distributed? That's a good question. It would just fold yeah. in on you as I didn't you sunk, see any, sink down. Yeah. I didn't see any people video game style like bouncing around on them. So so that's all yeah. I got for that. Do you have any fast facts before we get into the major fact? I do. So uh, the specifically the comb crested chicana um, lives in uh, Borneo, the Philippines, Sulawesi. Um, the Sun Sunda Islands, uh, New Guinea, um, and northern and eastern Australia, which is why we've been talking about it uh, quite a bit. So it's all down there in Southeast Asia, North uh, Oceania, North and Eastern Oceania. Um, it eats seeds, um, but it also likes to eat aquatic insects. Um, that are found floating on the surface of water. Um, also, f that they find on things like lily pads. Um, and in contrast to many bird and animal groups, the G many Jacana species are not only matriarchal, but also polyandrous, which means that it's one female to many males. So one female will have a harem of males. Um, even like matriarchal, uh, an classic matriarchal animals like uh, the hyena or the elephant, um, they don't keep harems of males. Um, they can um, exert dominance over males, but they don't. They don't keep like reproductive groups of of males. Um, so this is kind of this is kind of a unique thing. I'm sure. I wonder if these will make it into that new, like, um, Animal Queens Disney thing that they're doing, where they focus just on the uh, on the matriarchal um, animal groups. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Probably mm. not gonna watch it. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll leave it at that, uh, and let and and pass it on over to. Uh, the major my subordinate okay. because i'm general info i'm pretty much the head honcho <laughs> and ma major is uh 
like two two steps down from me. So makes sense because general info is in charge of all the info. Yeah, so Whereas I'm delegating. The major is only I'm gonna in charge of one thing. Yeah, I'm gonna delegate the the major fact to the major. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm calling this major fact Bigfoot, Big Bird. That's Bigfoot, big Bigfoot, big Bigfoot, Big Bird, Sir. <laughs> Uh, the comb crested jacana thrives in habitats called billabongs, but which are not uh, board shorts. They are a small body of fresh water in Australia. That, that's about as Australian as I can imagine as well. Like these are all. Uh-huh. This is just screaming Australia to me. Bill, billabongs term, and lily trotters. The term is u- often used to refer to oxbow lakes which are lakes that are formed by river water that are that's left behind when the river changes course. So you know how like if like a river gets like a really what's called an oxbow like um it curves a lot before going back to you know its straight path. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the water just like decides like we're just going to cut right through that oxbow. And leaves the like loop behind, uh-huh. and that could be a billabong. Uh, Interesting. So, billabongs are often abundant with floating vegetation, such as water lilies or water hyacinth. Uh, Jacanas rely on these lakes to feed on water bugs. Some birds might swarm or hover over the water to catch insects, but not jacanas. Instead, they walk on the surface of the water rather than or, or rather than fly, or rather they walk on vegetation. They're not they're they're called um in violation of what is it, the second commandment, third commandment? Do not take the Lord's name in vain. They're called the Jesus bird. That's the second commandment. We already have Jesus lizards, so Yeah. The the basilisk. Um, they walk on vegetation to manage this. They have extremely strange looking elongated toes and toenails. Like you mentioned, it's elongated toes spread its weight across a lily pad or across several, several lily pads or vegetation in order to avoid sinking. So like we were just talking about, if you were to lay across the giant lily pad, you'd be less likely to sink than if you just like put your heels together and and just stood on it because your all the force would be directed down in one spot pushing the leaf down it's lily snowshoes yeah exactly that's exactly the idea of a snowshoe so you can walk like legless on the yeah snow. on tennis rackets he should have been wearing mm-hmm. tennis rackets that would have made that scene more believable uh so these adaptations enable it's a forage for food and move gracefully across the water without sinking. However, gracefully is a strong word because they kind of look like when you try to walk quickly on a trampoline when they're walking <laughs> on the on the water. <laughs> this is very gangly. Yes. A lot of a lot gangly. of motion but not a lot of movement. If you're picturing like this like last unicorn esque grace then no, it it looks silly. It do, it, you're like, how does it not sink? It does sometimes. It <laughs> and they're like they're quickly stepping to the next one, like it's a Mario level. Yeah, um, if you stand on the platform for too long, it falls down. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they will just like stand on it. It will sink, and they will allow it and just sit on the water like a duck. Um. <laughs> Like, I guess I'm doing this now. And I guess that's a tactic to just let yourself sink to, like, avoid birds of prey that might be overhead. Um, so lily pads uh, offer a surface to walk on, but they also attract insects. Since the they have uh, these little white flowers that stick up out of the water. So jacanas often enjoy Big fat Australian bees, which are slower apparently than European bees and taste great to, to 
I wonder if a B tastes like a um <laughs> like a a warhead. Where you just, it's like a little spicy on the it's a little sour on the top, but then you, that honey flavor comes in. Man, what warheads have you been having if you're saying it's a little sour on the top? Those things <laughs> knock me flat on my tuchus for like the first 30 seconds and then it's like oh now i'm just eating regular candy yeah I imagine man, that was bee tastes like that was quite an experience that i'm 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 good with the one for, for this year uh sometimes they will pluck bees and other bugs right out of flowers um affording its prey one final meal that's nice so yeah it's kindness it's considered uh also feathers or <laughs> Fathers of a feather are the ones who take care of their young and they do so by tucking them up under their wings while they walk around. So it looks horrifying. Look up a picture of this when you're not driving Uh, because it looks, it appears as though one bird has a horrifying mass of spindly legs. Um, It is truly a horror show. Um, let me see. Oh <laughs> man, that is an Elden Ring boss. Yeah, right. That is that is Jacana the Grafted. I did not know. I did not know this about it. Otherwise, I would have put that into the 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 um the nicknames. That is on. Un- <laughs> that's unsettling. Yeah, <laughs> it looks but like good a on him for being bird. a good dad. <laughs> avian centipede um but females are larger and more aggressive and they will kill young chicks to encourage the fathers to mate (coughs) so sometimes these bullies these lady bullies will grab chicks right out from under their father's wings and kill them so it's like Look, you have no kids now. What are you going to do? You you have to mate again. And he's like, I can't argue with your logic. Okay. (laughs) You know what? You're right. You're always right. (laughs) But that's all I got. So you think they're good. You think they're good fathers until they let something like that happen. Well, they're little. Compared to the females, they can't do anything about it. They need a gun. The great equalizer. <laughs> <They need> to... <laughs> the, the only thing worse than, of, <laughs> than one of these big spindly boys with eight other spindly arms like sticking out of underneath their wings is each one of them with a Glock. <laughs> <laughs> each one of these little arms has a pistol in it. <laughs> Or at the very least, like a you know a golden order sword and shield. Yeah, so they can kill the. Uh, um, I forgot what they call them, the, the unmaidenless. I keep wanting to call them the ashen ones or the unkindled, you know, unkindled, but. Um, tarnished. There we tarnished, go. Tarnished, yeah. The tarnished. Um, These birds are kind of like the, what are those things? The first thing, like when you in Elden Ring, the grafted scion. Yes, it's just a mass of arms and legs, and fear. All, all just melded together to, to ruin your day. Yeah. So yeah, check it out. I'm, I'm sure you will walk away normal from, from that. <laughs> but. You got anything else? That's all I got. All right. We are, we are, we're doing well on the timing here. We're actually coming in right on time. Uh, Mm -hmm. nice. So for you out there in podcast, yeah, that was the comb crested Jacana. So keep your harem happy. Trot some lilies and splash around on your oversized chicken stilts. Like the Jacana here in life, death and taxonomy.
Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. Life, Death, and Taxonomy is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> Chicana. Yeah. What is that?